I'm here to talk to you about a computational method that we have developed for inferring molecular targets from time course expression data and the application of our method to influenza viral infection study. To begin with, um, elucidating the molecular mechanism of drug actions and diseases is very important in drug discovery and disease treatment. For this, we are aiming at inferring direct targets of perturbations that, that are caused by drugs or diseases um, using differential gene expression profiles. However, the challenge is distinguishing target genes from a number of differentially expressed genes of high throughput data. Therefore, we are approaching this problem by uh, network perturbation analysis. And in this analysis, we can consider direct targets as node perturbations in a network and we can compute those nodes by using a mathematical model. Particularly, um, I'd like to talk about um, the methods that are based on transcription kinetic models. Um, the examples of the existing methods are NIR, MNI, SSCM, and DeltaNet in this approach. And these previous methods are derived from an ordinary differential equations of mRNA syn synthesis rate and steady state conditions are often, often assumed in, in these methods. And by looking at the differential expressions between treated and control samples and logarithm of the equations, the original problem can be linearized as denoted here. Now C is a data matrix of log scale gene expressions and A is gene regulatory network and P is perturbations on the system. Since network A and perturbation P are unknown in this linear system, um, our previous method, DeltaNet, infers matrix A and P simultaneously by solving um, the linear regression problem using regularization techniques such as elastic net or lasso regressions. Thus, um, DeltaNet requires an input of gene expression profiles from both background and test samples and it provides an inferred network and perturbation scores for each gene in each test sample. Additionally, um, prior information of network st structures can be incorporated in DeltaNet to increase the uh, accuracy of target predictions. <coughs> However, um, the existing methods that are mentioned are designed for analyzing steady state samples and there, um, therefore, um, a problem arises when using time series expression data to such methods. To illustrate this, I'd like to show an example. So here is a simple network consisting of three genes. And let's imagine the case that gene one is constantly perturbed over time. Then the expression of gene two and gene three will be altered sequentially. Then if we apply these gene expression profiles to the method that are based on steady state model, the reverse causality would be more plausible in network inference because all three samples are treated as independent steady states. Um, this means that now gene one is the most downstream genes in this inferred network and the alteration of its expression is caused by gene two and gene three in second and third samples, respectively. So this example shows a complication when using time series expression data to steady state based model. There, therefore, we developed a new computational method uh, which can incorporate the dynamics of expression profiles. The new method is called DeltaNet and is extended from our previous method DeltaNet. So first we assume the st pseudo steady state of the system at each time point, and then we applied another network constraint to prevent the inference of reverse causality. So here we assume log scale gene expression changes linearly um, following the equations where S is the slopes of log scale gene expressions. And if we apply this linear uh, relationship into the original OD equation, the derivative of log scale gene expression, expression, which means slope, can be represented as the following. And since we are assuming the slope is constant at a small time interval, the second derivative of these equations can be zero, 
then we can derive a simple linear equation S equals AS. S is a matrix of slope variables here. So our new method um, solves uh, two equations simultaneously to infer matrix A and P. We tested this, this new method on East microarray data set, which includes more than 100 time series expression, uh, uh, time series samples from gene knockdowns and overexpression experiments. And after delta nets analysis, we ranked the genes based on the perturbation scores, and we calculated true positives as a function of number of top genes that we are looking at from ranked genes. And as you can see in this figure, um, our previous method, DeltaNet, um, shown in green, performed quite poorly in predicting the targets from time series data, but our new method, DeltaNet, performed the best compared to the other methods. Now let's take a look at another application of our method to influenza viral infection study. Uh, influenza A virus is responsible for seasonal epidemics and reoccurring pandemics. And above all, H1N1 and H5N1 virus, um, famous as swine flu and avian flu, have gradually become a threat to public human health. As you're already familiar with, H1N1 virus is highly transmissible, and since 20th century, it has caused three major pandemics. And although the mild, mild pathogenicity of H1N1 virus uh, more than 2,000 um, 2, people died in, by the latest pandemic in 2009. On the other hand, H5N1 virus is less transmissible, but it is known for high virulence. So not only the fatality rate is more than 60%, but um, it also causes severe damage to human respiratory system. So regarding the concerns over these viruses, many treatments are being developed especially understanding the mechanisms of influenza viral infection helps in developing drugs targeting the host proteins, which are crucial for virus replication. For this, we applied um, DeltaNets to elucidate the mechanisms of H1N1 and H5N1 viral infections and to provide an insight into unusual severity of H5N1 disease in humans. So the data set in DeltaNet's input in this study was composed of um, time series expression profiles from more than 600 micro samples of human airway epithelial cell experiments. And this also includes the data from H1N1 and H5N1 infection studies, which are from our collaborating group of Professor Kawaka in University of, University of Wisconsin-Madison. Additionally, we also use the prior information of network structures for human lung cancer cells, and we use the ranked genes after delta nets analysis for gene cell enrichment analysis. So next slide shows the result of enriched pathways from delta nets predictions. Uh, we divided time of um, post-infections into three phases. So phase one is zero to seven hours of early post-infection, and phase two is seven to, seven to 18 hours, and phase three is later than 18 hours of post-infections. We obtained these enriched pathways um, for each phase from the genes that are ranked by DeltaNets, and the size of circle in this figure indicates the, uh, the number of enriched pathways belonging to the same group, and the more red color in circle uh, represents um, the higher enrichment in pathways. And you can also consider the degree of enrichment as the degree of modulations during viral infections. So first, in, in this result, we observed that um, H5 and virus uh, modulate mod much more pathways, and these pathways were affected in early phases, phases of um, post-infections. Also, um, our result also shows that um, the, the very, uh, distinctively different patterns in modulation between two. So for example, the pathways that are hijacked by viruses um, were quite different between two viral infections. So um, first, the membrane transport and mRNA stability pathways that are necessary for virus replications were affected in only phase of H5N1 infection 
but was affected in late phase of H1N1 infections. Besides um, the pathways related to um, host cell survivability, such as PI3K pathway um, signaling and cell cycle, also known as being exploited by viruses, were modulated very highly in overall time basis um, during H5N1 infections, but was less significantly in H1N1 infection. Not only that, um, the modulation by host response was also different between two viruses. Instead of activating the high immune response as in H1N1, um, a program cell death was triggered um, during H5N1 infection as a stronger host de de defense mechanism against the high virulent H5N1 virus. Lastly, we also found um, several pathways that are modulated very highly in H5N1 infection but was not in H1N1. And although the re relationship between these pathways and the in, uh, viral infections are not clearly known yet, um, this can be another candidate, uh, which can be investigated further and which can reveal the new mechanisms of virus infections. And some of our observations were indeed proposed by previous literatures, and this supports the results from um, Delta Net's predictions, suggesting the applicability of our method to human disease study. In conclusion, uh, we developed a new method, um, DeltaNet, for analyzing time series gene expression data. And this method can provide accurate um, target predictions and capable to provide insights into mechanism of diseases and compounds actions. I'd like to thank to our group members and the, um, thank to ETH Research Grant for the funding of my study. And thank you for your attention. Um, so, sorry, could you rephrase that again? Is it that the experiments were done with very different host, host cells, or are they redoing the same host cells? I'm very shocked that there is no overlap between these kinds of things. Uh, yes, so um, these experiments done by the same cell line, um, but um, actually if you just look at the gene expression, um, differential, ge uh, differential gene expressions, they show quite similar um, be, uh, behaviors over time, like the immune response are strongly um, triggered um, over time, but by our analysis, we, we can detect that the actual key pathways are directly involved in uh, specific viral um, strains. Um, yes, and then we could see the difference between two 